Welcome back, guys. This is Axiom, a.k.a. Ryofu, and this is The Gaming Harbinger, Episode 4. Today, we're going to talk about the PlayStation Vita. Now, just for a quick side note, I just want to let you guys know that the pictures that we'll be displaying are from iFixit. I will leave a link in the description. And I also wanted you to know, if you will need any tool for sure, it will be a Phillips 00 screwdriver. Now, I don't remember what the hell this damn thing is called, but it's a plastic thingy. That's what we're going to call it right now, the plastic thingy. And you pretty much see these things in um, cell phone kits or cell phone repair kits. Um, and pretty much it's like this little plastic piece that slides in between the crevice of parts of the cell phone so you can kind of snap off the plastic pieces. If you feel like this tool can make it easier for you, by all means use it. It is not a necessity. I pretty much just use my nails. So um, yeah, just so you know that, you can do it that way, but it's not necessary. You mainly just need the, screw, the Phillips 00 screwdriver. Now let's get into this. This video will be broken into two segments. If you are curious on upon purchasing a PlayStation Vita, I highly recommend you to watch the full video. Now, or if you already own a PlayStation Vita and it is the original model, I encourage you to watch the full video. If you own the PlayStation Slim, you probably only need to watch this first segment. And that is because the first half we're gonna talk about an issue that happens pretty much with the Vita not turning on. A scary thing for many of us that have been through this. And the other thing is, uh, the other part is the of the video will be a charger that I highly recommend for people that own the 1000 series, AKA the original model. And let's say you lose your original charger or Maybe you just don't, you know, uh, it just stops working like mine. That That's pretty much what happened to me. So, um, so let's go to this, this first part of the video. And by the way, this whole thing, I think, makes a full circle. Like, I believe what happened to me in this first part of the video is due to things that happened in the second half of the video. So these things kind of intertwine. I could be wrong, but I think that's what the case is. And you'll understand in a moment. So let's get into this. Um, first, what we have here is one day, I probably hadn't played my Vita in maybe like a week or so. I go to uh, turn it on, it's dead. Not Nothing's happening. So I go ahead, plug it in. I see the orange light pop on. You know, let's just say I went to work that day. So I plugged it in before I went to work. Come back, you know, about nine hours later. Um, I unplug it. I go to turn it on. And doesn't turn on. Interesting. So then I'm like, that's strange. So I go to plug it in again. And I notice that the orange light pops on and it kind of flashes. And then it flashed maybe like once or twice and then it went off. And then I was like, hmm, but I didn't think too much on it. I went ahead and just left it alone. And then I went to bed. I woke up, checked it again. And then lo and behold, uh, same thing didn't turn on. So then at this point, I'm, you know, I'm starting to get a little concerned. But again, we're in the same situation again. I'm about to go to work. So I'm just like, OK. I make sure I'm looking at it. I see the light, the orange light pop on. I noticed that it only like blinked once or twice and then it was off. But then I kept trying to, I was like, I hope it's not losing the signal or anything like that. So I go and uh, tr while it's flashing, I try to turn the system on. Then the, the orange light uh, was, was blinking. Then it was blinking, you know, instead of like one or two flashes. It was like a continuous blink. And I knew, oh, that means that it's not, it doesn't have enough juice to turn on. So I'm like, okay. I put it, I leave it alone. I come back. You know, I come back from work. Still not working. So 
So at this point, I'm thinking to myself, okay, is this must be the charger. It could be the battery. I hope the system's not fried or anything. So the first thing I do is I try to connect it to the computer. Um, computer's not picking up. Nothing's happening. So I go ahead and I order um, a, new, a new charger. And at that time, you know, I had to wait, you know, whatever it was, a couple weeks, and then I got it. I got, and I'm going to spare you the details, but the long story short is the same shit. So I'm like, okay, this is, you know, this is clearly not working. Um, so I start doing some uh, digging around, and uh, I came across a video. The Adequate Gamer. Gunshots for The Adequate Gamer, man. Damn it, man. Damn it. And and I'm telling you, man, I was so relieved to 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 find something because I had to do a little bit of digging. It wasn't I didn't unearth this easily. So pretty much uh, from what you know, and I encourage you to check out his video. I will try to put up the link for his video as well as uh, the link for the, you know, when we get to the other part of the video the second half of the video, but I, I am grateful for this because, uh, man, I really did think I need to replace the battery at this point or the system's fried. That's really what I was along the lines of thinking. So the gist of it is this, I'm going to summarize it. I, I encourage you to watch this video because, uh, like I said, that's where I got all this information from. Well, according to him, he found off of some dude off Reddit. I think he said the name was Luxoid, I think. And according to this guy, he's saying that there was some uh, firmware update, you know, some kind of error that happened with the firmware. And that's what's causing this issue. And uh, pretty much what he ended up doing was uh, disassembling his PlayStation Vita and then unplugging the bat the battery from the motherboard waiting 10 seconds putting it back together and you should be good to go i'm like that is fucking fantastic so i went ahead and tried this out and believe me i'm not i'm one of those people i'm not too crazy about taking systems apart um within the past couple of years i have been doing so just because you know at this point i have a lot a lot a lot a lot of consoles and you know the older ones i feel like I'm less concerned, like, you know, taking this apart, cleaning it, you know, m making it look a little nicer. But, you know, some of the stuff that I'm still playing on, you know, like a Xbox One X, for example, I'm more apprehensive to take that thing apart. But anyways, I went ahead and uh, I, you know, I watched, uh, like I said, the Adequate Gamers video. I, I will encourage you, if you are petrified about you know about uh taking apart your console then what i'd recommend you to do is you can watch the video for uh it's a fine lad that goes by the name of my mate vince maybe you've heard of him um he has a video where actually he's talking about or showing i should say uh taking apart the playstation vita so you can replace the battery now if you want to watch a step-by-step -step thing as opposed to me walking you through this really, you know, clumsily. <laughs> if you want to watch his video, then yeah, sure, go for that. But I will tell you this much. This is very easy. There is only one part of this that I encourage you to be careful with. And that is um, when you take this thing apart, in total, I believe there's eight screws. There's uh, four on the back. There's two on the top. And I believe... Um, the little, I believe it's the little uh, cover that you don't use for shit. Um, you will take those two screws out that are on top, and then there's two screws at the bottom. Now, the thing is, the most important part to remember is once you take this thing apart, um, you want to start at the top. Do not start at the bottom. That is the most, this is the only part of this where you could risk damaging anything, you know, so, because there's two uh, cable ribbons at the bottom. So, please, please, please start at the top. You know, once you got all these eight screws out. 
And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, little snap plastic pieces that snap together, you know, once you got the screws out. So then once you unsnap the top, you will be able to pull it just a wee bit and see at the bottom that, okay, there's two ribbon cables that are attached. And then you'll gently lay it down. You will see uh, the battery. And then with the battery, what you're going to do is there, there should be uh, two, uh, two ribbons, or not two ribbons, uh, two cables. And, and by the way... Um, these, I, you know, of course, I would just, you, you have to be careful with these two as well, but I would say the riskier part is just the opening sequence. But with these two cables, all you need to do is there's one connected to your screen and there's one connected to the motherboard. And what you need to do is just make sure you, um, maybe all you really need to do is unplug the, uh, the motherboard one and you'll be golden. But just to be on the safe side, just go ahead, unplug both of them. And uh, just make sure you don't pull from, you know, the cord. Just similar to, you know, how you plug in, uh, you know, an AC adapter. You know, don't pull from the cable. You want to pull from that little plastic piece. And it snaps in and snaps on. So it, it's way, it's what, this is way easier than what maybe it sounds to some people. It's not, it's really not difficult. I encourage you to just go ahead and do this. And like I said, if you feel really super concerned go ahead and watch my mate vince and he'll walk you through it um and once you do that just you 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 know you unplug the battery from both of those two spots wait for 10 seconds snap both of them back in you should be golden you know and what i notice is once i connected them back up i put the whole thing together i went to power it on like i always do and guess what it turned on it it wasn't a uh, full battery though i will say that so in my case from my experience um i think the adequate gamers i think his was a little different like his was holding was like completely full in my case it was um at i want to say maybe 20 percent battery life so i still had some juice in there but it wasn't um i it pretty much it wasn't charging and like i said this this fixed everything, you know, because like I said, it's very misleading and people will just rightfully assume that, oh, duh, you know, you're seeing the orange light. It's not fully charged. Leave it alone and it'll be good to go. And it's like, no, fool. No, I did that already. I did that twice. And like I said, I even bought another charger. And now, like I said, now we'll go into the other video, other part of the video where it'll explain my issue with chargers and and, and this specifically because i own the thousand series the original model and so like i said without further ado let's get into that video okay okay in this part of the video guys what i wanted to do was explain to you an issue that could happen if you own or plan to purchase the PlayStation Vita, the 1000 model series. The 2000, I believe, is the slim, and that one has a micro USB cord that you can charge, which, of course, as you guys know, those are in abundance. You can find those anywhere. You know, your phone probably uses a micro USB charger. Now, for the 1000 series, you have to concern yourself with this mf -er right here. Now... If you look at this, it's sad that this is important, but it is important. So, here we have the original model. And this third-party cord connects. Boom. You see how easy that slides in and out? The reason why I'm showing you that is because um, I originally, like normal people, I bought the thousand series model because of the screen the screen the colors look great you know it's it's just a it's just superior to the lcd screen but like i said this cord is the issue now what ended up happening is that probably a year or so into owning the system the original cord that came with the system it just slowly stopped working and i don't know why but I ended up just, you know, looking for others. 
And I remember the at that time, the original cord was very overpriced. So I went ahead and got a generic brand. Didn't think much of it. Snagged that sucker up. It worked fine. And then nine months later, that one went out. And I'm like, okay. So then I go ahead and purchase. Um, I don't even think it was the same seller. You know, I might have purchased that one off of eBay. And then this time, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to get another generic one. And this one was like off of Amazon, I believe. And um, I go to put it in. And let me just show this again. Uh, regrettably, I did throw away this cord and I wish I would have kept it because it would go in, right? And it would probably go like this far in. I'm not even kidding. And I was like, oh man. And so then what ended up happening is that I got, you know, I would apply so much pressure and eventually I got it in and I was like relieved. But then at the same time, it's like, you know, that's risking damaging, you know, your console, especially, you know, that port right here. So what ended up happening is that I, I just knew I was like, I'm not going to keep doing this. So I went ahead and I think I might have went with eBay instead. And I went with a different seller I thought was a different type of generic brand cable, but it looked pretty much the same. And it had the same issue, which was, you know, super snug fit. You almost have to, you know, shove that sucker to the point of, like I said, risking damaging your port. So what I ended up, you know, saying was, okay, I need to find something completely different. And that's what I did. And I came across, you know, this right here. And I believe that's Gomatic, if you can see that. And... As you can see, this is the cable, how the cable looks. Um, this part right here comes out like that. And originally it's two parts, but just in a different way to the original cable. So like I said, I don't know what the deal with this whole 3.5 uh, millimeter part to it, but whatever. But it just connects to this right here and then boom. And now this will connect to your PlayStation Vita. And as you guys saw before, it goes in like the original. No problems. It goes in and out just like that. And like I told you guys before, the whole reason that I'm showing this to you is because if you are planning to purchase this particular model of the Vita, this is an issue that you probably will run into because... Or maybe you'll get lucky and your cable will last forever. I really don't think I played the Vita enough to where the cord should have went out or whatever. Who knows what I did. But there might have been a time or two I might have been charging and playing. And I have my theory on doing that with um, electronics. Whether it's a phone or a Switch or whatever or a tablet. I have, I have my theory on that. On using stuff while it's charging. But anyways... Um, I think if you're considering to get the Vita, to be honest with you, I would say, so, you know, save yourself the trouble, get the Slim. I mean, the screen still looks good on the Slim, you know what I mean? Um, the colors are just a little richer on this model, but um, I don't know. I mean, you're, you're, you're going to have thousands upon thousands of micro USB chargers to work with and then this one you know because you might be thinking okay well if you already purchased that many generics why didn't you just go ahead and get you know an original that sony makes keep in mind the system is discontinued and not only that they didn't sell a whole lot of the original one to begin with so therefore these cables at the time when i when it first went out i probably could have got a couple but now here we are like four years later not so much now. <laughs> so that's that's the issue with that. And um, so I pretty much had no choice but to go the generic brand route. And like I said, I came across this brand, which it works the way it's supposed to. In case you're wondering, you shouldn't be wondering this because if you already own a Vita or, or 
you're considering getting a Vita, you should probably already know this, but you know that charger, the battery pack uh, thingy that uh, Sony sells? Well, yeah, I tried it. It doesn't charge with this damn thing, unfortunately. And the sad reality is that uh, I bought, bought that external battery pack when my first cable was already kaput. And then, so I have never been able to use that battery pack because it uses, um, like I said, I don't know, some proprietary system that only Sony has and this effing cable. So I never got to use that battery pack, unfortunately. I just have and it's just sitting somewhere. But regardless, um, I wanted to share this information with you because I know the system's discontinued and I really, really actually enjoy the PlayStation Vita. Um, I still have three games I need to get through. I still need to get through Danganronpa, the third game. Well, actually, it's the fourth game, but you get what I'm saying. V3 or whatever they're calling it. And uh, Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2. I'm probably a third way through Trails of Cold Steel 1, but I've just, you know, I'm playing way too many games at once, and uh, I need to get back to that. But I, I do want to finish at least those three. There's probably a couple of others I wouldn't mind going back to, but I definitely at least need to uh, finish those. And But aside from that, there's really not going to be like no heavy, heavy gaming on the Vita that I'll do from this point on. And at the very least, I will fucking finish uh, Danganronpa uh, V3 because I just, dang, you know, my PlayStation Vita is my, it's my uh, Danganronpa v Vita or whatever you want to call it because I, I really became a fan of this series, you know, and it's just an awesome, awesome series. But anyways, um, we'll probably, I'll probably do more videos like this, you know, just to... This is something I came across as a PlayStation Vita owner and, you know, my own personal experiences and my own troubles. And I wanted to share that with you guys in case you're considering getting this model or you have it and maybe you have it tucked away somewhere and then you decide to dust it off. And then all of a sudden now you can't charge the damn thing, you know, or you might have the, you know, an issue like what I described in the first part of the video. You know, so hopefully this stuff that I've brought to the table, hopefully it can be of use to you. If not, like I said, at least you have the information there if you're considering on getting a Vita. It's been fun, guys. Thank you for checking out the video. I'll leave a link in the description of this uh, charger. And like I said, I'll see you guys around.